How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome to the NHL 22 simulation of the career of Shane Wright, the player who is projected to go number one in the upcoming 2022 NHL entry draft. Very curious to see how it plays out, especially with the likelihood of him being drafted by the Montreal Canadiens who just won the 2022 NHL draft lottery as they moved, stayed at number one, the Devils moved up to number two and the Coyotes went dropped down to number three. It is possible the Canadians take Logan Cooley at number one and Wright drops to number two and goes to the Devils, but I am going to move ahead with the assumption that the Canadians will choose Wright number one. He fits the bill for the Montreal Canadiens, future number one center, something that's been lacking for a very long time. He is an elite two-way player, has offensive flair, is a strong skater, has great character. I think he would fit well in the Montreal Canadiens organization, but whether or not he goes, I want to see how his career will pan out here in NHL 22. So as I've done with past career simulation videos, I'm going to take control of a different team in the NHL. Make sure that Shane Wright is drafted to the Canadians. So what I'm likely going to do is take the Coyotes. They'll likely finish last. Then I'll take that pick, trade it to the Canadians. Try to make it as accurate as the 2022 NHL draft will be, at least for the first 16 selections. Aside from that, there will be no control whatsoever. The lines, the players, the trades, the free agencies, all that thing, all those things will be uh, controlled by the AI general manager. So it's gonna be hands off and we'll take a back seat as we watch the career of Shane Wright blossom. So Shane Wright, he is a 78 overall player here on NHL 22. I'm not gonna touch any of his stats, attributes, X factors. He has high elite potential at the age of 17. Obviously, he'll be drafted at the age of 18. So he's listed as a playmaker, but he's an elite two-way talent. I'm not going to go too deeply into his draft profile as I'm going to be doing that during a mock draft video that I'll have coming out soon. But just to say, Shane Wright, a lot of people are thinking he might be a bust. He, is not good. he wasn't great in the first half of his OHL season, but you know he what? He scored 94 points in 63 games in the 21-22 OHL season. Missed a year in 2021 due to the pandemic, but has played two seasons in the OHL. Well, well, well over a point per game. And I have high hopes for him. And hopefully he does come to Montreal Canadiens as a Canadiens fan. So we're going to simulate through his career. We'll watch where he goes every season, how he's being utilized by the team that has him, what kind of contract he's on, what kind of point totals, what kind of awards, Stanley Cups, and things like that he may or may not be winning. And we'll wrap it all up at the end of his career. I've done these videos before. They've gone well over an hour. I'm going to try to look a little less at what's going on with the team that he's with and just really try and focus on Shane Wright to try and get us in and out of here in under an hour. Who knows, maybe this hour video is over an hour, but I'm going to try and keep it under. Let's hop ahead to the 2022 NHL entry draft. I simmed through all 2021 as that year is a write-off. I don't want to put him straight on the team because he's not on that team yet. I want to make it nice and organic as much as possible. So without further ado, let's get this career underway. All right, so it certainly wasn't easy as many teams didn't want to trade their picks and all that, but I got the Canadians number one, I got the Flyers number five, I got the Ducks number 10, I got the Jackets, Islanders, Jets, and Canucks all right. So I tried to do what I could, but hey, this is the multiverse of madness. It can't all be perfect. And with the first overall selection in the 2022 NHL entry draft, the Montreal Canadiens go ahead and select Mr. Shane Wright, 78 overall, high elite. I'm going to add those X factors to him later on and to begin next season but growing now to the age of 18 he had some more development i believe in some of the attributes we'll see how he grows over the 2022 offseason and whether or not he will make the team headed into 2022-23 so begin the 2022-23 season, year number one, Shane Wright has made the Montreal Canadiens lineup. When I go to his edit player profile, it shows that he has all of these X factors. I'm not sure why they don't show up on the edit lines or view line screen, but they are indeed there. But after suiting up in just two games in the 2022-23 preseason, registering one assist, he averaged uh, 15 and a half minutes of ice time. Shane Wright sent back to the OHL, still a 78 overall. So the Montreal Canadiens thinking one more year of growth would be best for him. Maybe he gets a call up somewhere in the year, but it looks like he'll spend year number one, which actually be year number zero 2.0 pretty much in the OHL. So hopefully 2023-24 will be his actual rookie season. So after taking an extra year in the OHL, Shane Wright is ready for his rookie season in 2023-24. Now at the age of 19 and is an 85 overall, 
listed as a second line forward five star puck skills four star shooting the senses 91 offensive awareness 90 stick checking a strong skater very much looking forward to seeing how his rookie season goes in his extra season in the ohl he put up 93 points in 60 games with kingston so with mike hoffman and cole caulfield as his line mates i'm very excited to see how shane wright's rookie season goes the montreal canadians once again missed out on the playoffs in 2022 23 so let's see what happens in 23-24. In his rookie season, Shane Wright helped Montreal Canadiens back to the playoffs as they finished 7th best in the NHL with a record of 47-30-5. When it came to regular season scoring, Shane Wright put up 60 points in his rookie season, 17 goals and 43 assists. But unfortunately, Matthew Savoy of the Detroit Red Wings, who was drafted 6th overall in 2022, led the rookie scoring race in the NHL with 73 points of his own, which won him the Calder Trophy. Although I'm sure that Shane Wright had some votes and likely a nomination. In the playoffs, the Montreal Canadiens ended up having a pretty solid run as they went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who beat them in five games and went on to win the Stanley Cup in five against the Anaheim Ducks. So, hey, year number three, the first season with Shane Wright, and the Canadiens are going to the Eastern Conference Finals, hey, things are looking up. In the postseason, Wright was third in team scoring as he had 12 points in 17 games and headed into the second year of his entry-level deal. He currently sits at an 86 overall. Headed into year number two, the 2024-25 regular season, Shane Wright at the age of 20 has jumped to an 88 overall, listed as a first-line forward. The five-star puck skills, senses, and shooting four-star skating, four-star defense. Just got to get better on the draw. His face-offs are not great, but aside from that, everything is really, really good. Uh, the fighting skill brings his physical grade down, and his poise brings, some, I guess, his overall down a little bit, but he is uh, a first-line elite talent. Nick Suzuki on the first line is the only thing holding him back from being there, but playing on the second line with Josh Anderson and Cole Caulfield, I'm looking forward to what should be a solid offensive output from Shane Wright in his sophomore season. In year number two, the Montreal Canadiens once again had a strong showing, this time finishing fourth in the NHL with a record of 51, 27, and 4. In the regular season, Shane Wright led his team in scoring as he scored 18 goals and 52 assists for 70 points through all 82 games. And in the playoffs, how about this for a surprise? The Montreal Canadiens capture the 2025 Stanley Cup. They beat the Sabres in seven in round number one, then the Islanders in six, Hurricanes in six in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then the Anaheim Ducks in seven games in the Stanley Cup Final. The Ducks losing back-to-back -back cups to Eastern Conference teams. So the Canadians with a seven-game thriller to capture their first cup since 1993 here in 2025. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised the Canadians won the cup this quickly. It's pretty rare in EA land. Usually teams like Toronto and Tampa are dominating at the beginning of a franchise mode. But nonetheless, Shane Wright, 17 points in 24 playoff games. Nick Suzuki captured the Conn Smythe with 24 points in 26 games. Dvorak, Caulfield, great showings from them. They get Stanley Cups. Gallagher gets a cup. Carey Price, yes, he gets his Stanley Cup. A feel-good story here in Montreal. But it means big money coming up for Shane Wright as he now has a Stanley Cup ring. He is a huge piece of this team. Headed into the offseason, he remains at an 88 overall and will be moving into the final year of his entry-level contract. Year number three, and Shane Wright has finally made it to first-line status in Montreal. That's what they've been waiting for. Up to an 89 overall, now at the age of 21, still with high elite potential. Five stars are looking great. He still remains, you know, face-offs from 71 to a 74. That's nice. Other attributes that are already at five stars continue to grow. Great puck skills and passing. Shootings there. Looking forward to seeing what he does on the first line with Cole Caulfield on his left and Brendan Gallagher on his right. Coming off of a Stanley Cup and on the last year of his entry-level deal, I'm very excited for 2025-26. In year number three, the Canadians continue to stay hot, this time finishing third in the NHL with a record of 50-27-5. Unfortunately, they have never even won their division, let alone their conference, as the teams above them have always been in the Atlantic division. But still another 50-win year. Quite the surprise that Shane Wright puts up 108 points in 82 games yes you thought he'd improve but 108 points a 79 assist season 
crazy numbers through his first three years now in 246 games he has 238 points he's in for big money and is set to be a cornerstone on the canadians for a long time 35 goals for gallagher he's the benefactor of all that passing caulfield a playmaking type season as well very good stuff from the canadians and those 108 points were good enough to win Shane Wright the Art Ross Trophy in just his third NHL season at the age of 22. Three more points than Connor McDavid, nine more than Leon Dreisaitl, 13 more than Austin Matthews, despite him scoring 64 goals. What a year for Shane Wright. 108 points, Art Ross at the age of 22. In the playoffs, however, of course, the Canadians fell in five games in the first round to the eventual Eastern Conference champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, who lost in six to the National Predators for the 2026 Stanley Cup. So pretty anticlimactic. In those five games, Shane Wright scored just three points, but he can still call it a successful year as he wins the Art Ross, the Hart, and the Ted Lindsay Award all in his third season. Crazy year of hardware. What a performance from Shane Wright here on the Montreal Canadiens. Art Ross and Hart Trophies. Wright is the first Canadian since Carey Price to win the Hart Trophy. The first Canadian since Guy Lafleur in 1978 to win the Art Ross. His 79 assists are the third most in a season in Montreal Canadiens history. I am just absolutely blown away by Shane Wright here in his third season. He's going to be wanting a lot of money heading into his first contract. And hopefully the Montreal Canadiens can pay up and stay competitive. Headed into the 2026 offseason, Shane Wright remains at an 89 overall, but I would not be surprised if he gets into the 90s by year number four. Year number four, and Shane Wright is now up to a 91 overall. The attributes just continue to grow. His face-offs are looking solid now at 78. More of a real centerman. 95 offensive awareness, a five-star shooting, 97 passing crazy stuff he went ahead and signed a six-year contract with montreal canadians paying him 8.99 million per season just under 54 million dollars for the next six years a pretty team-friendly deal i do have to say he signed for six more years i believe caulfield has five or six years suzuki has four years uh, they have ivan provorov for, who has i think five or six more years uh, Allmark is signed for a little bit. Marc-Andre Fleury is back up. I love the core. I love the youth. I love the veterans. The Montreal Canadiens are looking great. I would love if this was their team in the real world. Year number one of this six-year contract, his fourth in the NHL. Let's see what Shane Wright can do coming off of all of that hardware. Year number four, a bit of a step back comparatively to what they've done recently. Montreal Canadiens finishing 11th in the NHL. 94 points, a record of 42, 30, and 10. But I think that's just because the East was so tight. No 100-point season for Shane Wright this year, but he was over a point per game. He missed five games due to injury, putting up 78 points in 77 games. And in the playoffs, once again, the Canadians fell in five games in the first round. This time to the Devils, who went on to lose to the Rangers in round number two, who went on to win the Stanley Cup in seven against the Colorado Avalanche. So a couple of really good years from Shane Wright that ended up not resulting in anything in terms of playoff success as the Canadians are 2-8 and eight in the playoffs the last two years. Only two games played for Shane Wright, likely due to that injury. He had one assist in those two games, was a negative three. And it's hard to say what went wrong for the Canadians. But heading into his fifth season, Shane Wright is a 90 overall, and we'll see how the team looks once some of those contracts expire. We head into 2027-28. Year number five, and the team is changing slightly here. Like, I'm not sure why Josh Norris is a winger and the 78 overall guy is a centerman and Suzuki's on the wing. Okay, a bit odd, but Shane Wright is a 90 overall with Caulfield on his left and Gallagher on his right. As per usual, his passing is elite, his face-offs have grown, and he's looking poised for another solid season. Defensively, just quickly looking at this, the Canadians are starting to run into some cap issues, maybe? I don't know. But after finishing last year in 11th place in the NHL and having back-to-back -back first round Game 5 exits, the Canadians will want 2027-28 to be an improvement. Year number five was a huge step back for Montreal Canadiens, as for the first time in Shane Wright's career, he misses the NHL playoffs. As a team, the Habs got 84 points and recorded a record of 38, 36, and 8. Shane Wright continues to be a bright spot on the team, though, as he scored 80 points in 82 games, setting a new career high in goals with 30, now at the age of 24. 
396 points through 405 NHL games, 80 point season and improvement on last year, just a couple below point per game. Heading into next season, he is still a 90 overall attributes looking like this. Faceoffs up to 83. Hopefully the team can get it together. Whatever the issues were this year can be sorted out and the team can get back to its winning ways. Year number six now, and it's quite the change to the lineup in Montreal as Shane Wright is playing on the top line as a 90 overall with 43-year-old Alex Ovechkin on his left and Connor Garland on his right. Uh, the second line is Farabee, Suzuki, Caulfield. Third is Norris, Pierre-Luc Dubois finally made his way to Montreal and Steckel, Mishak, Del Bell, Bellas, and Heinemann on the fourth. Defense is still Provorov. Now they got uh, Josh Morrissey in the mix. And goaltending, it's still all marks. So there's your little Canadians update. Shane Wright, 90 overall, still high elite, 24 years of age, with four more years, including this one, on his deal. Uh, attributes look pretty much the same as we left him off at the end of last year. That 94 offensive awareness, five-star shooting, all those good things will help to make it a good season, especially if he can make some passes to Alex Ovechkin, who always simulates very well. So hoping for a very successful sixth season here for the Canadiens de Montréal. The Canadians were back in business in year number six as they finished 11th in the NHL, 93 points and a record of 44, 33, and 5. In 82 games, Shane Wright once again led the team in scoring, hovering around that point per game pace, playing in all 82 games, scoring 31 goals and 48 assists. Uh, Alex Ovechkin, 28 goals in 67 games, uh, still a 79 overall AHL potential. He did what he could for the Canadians. But I'm not seeing Cole Caulfield here, so potentially a trade that took place sometime during the season. So that would be a huge change for the organization were that to be true. I'll look into it. Wow, yeah, so Cole Caulfield traded the New Jersey Devils at the trade deadline. He had 43 points in 64 games with the Canadians, and then went 20 points in 20 games with the Devils. So he had... 480 points in 640 games with Montreal before getting traded. Pretty crazy to see that. Cole Caulfield, now a member of the Devils. He still had four more years after this one on his contract, so I have no idea why the Canadians made that trade, but uh, what's done is done. In the playoffs, there was another first-round exit for the Canadians as they dropped in six games to the Toronto Maple Leafs, who uh, went and got swept by the Senators who lost in seven to the eventual Stanley Cup champion Columbus Blue Jackets, who beat the Ducks, who lost for a third time in the Cup Finals in this simulation. In the playoffs, Shane Wright couldn't quite carry his team to victory as he played in all six games and scored three goals, had four points, but the Habs unfortunately dropped to the Maple Leafs there. He maintains his 90 overall and will be heading into the third to last year of his contract next year in 2029-30. Year number seven now, the Canadians continue to make some huge moves as Artemi Panarin at the age of 37 now joins the team, 88 overall. He'll be here for just a one-year deal at 7.1 million. But Shane Wright is in the middle, Suzuki on his right, Panarin on his left. Could be a huge offensive season for the 90 overall, now 25 years of age. 84 face-offs, very solid defensively. Five stars, four stars all around, just three and a half physical. Everything else continues to grow extremely well. Three years left on his deal. He will be playing in his 500th game and likely scoring his 500th point sometime during this season. So let's hope that it is a good one for this new look Montreal Canadiens team. Year number seven was extremely disappointing for the Canadians as they finished 24th place in the NHL with a record of 37, 40, and 5, their worst since Shane Wright had joined the team. Despite the struggles, Shane Wright did put up a career high in goals as he scored 34 goals and scored 74 points in all 82 games. Wasn't as eventful as they thought it might be with Panarin and everybody else in the lineup. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 26 points, so some big struggles there. But Shane Wright is still performing. They just have to put a team around him. He maintains his 90 overall, will have two more years left on his deal, and continues to look like a solid two-way centerman, especially with 87 face-offs, headed into his eighth season. Year number eight, and Shane Wright is coming off back-to-back-to-back 30-plus goal seasons. Still at a 90 overall at the age of 26. As we mentioned at the end of last season, all the attributes are pretty much there. I don't think they're going to get much higher than what they are at the moment. The deking, you know, it goes up 93-94. But this is the type of player that Shane Wright will be. Five-star puck skills, five-star shooting. He's going to continue to be a huge threat. Now the question is, can the team continue to build around him? Wright has two years left on his contract. The Canadians have missed the playoffs twice in the last three years. Let's hope that Montreal can find their way. 
In year number eight, the Canadians were back in the playoff mix as they finished 12th in the NHL with 93 points and a record of 42, 31, and 9. For the first time in a long time, Shane Wright did not lead his team in scoring, although he played four less games than Suzuki. He scored 69 points in 78 games, which is actually his lowest point total since his rookie season. And in the playoffs for the fourth consecutive time since winning the Stanley Cup all the way back in 2025, the Canadians lost in the first round, this time in six games to the Panthers, who lost to the Capitals, who lost to the Devils, who lost to the Coyotes, so the Canadians were the ultimate losers of the 2031 playoffs. Shane Wright was the silver lining in the playoffs, though, as he scored six points in six games. Now at the age of 27, still maintaining his 90 overall. Face-ups now up to 88. That's cool to see. Everything else looks pretty much the same. And he'll be headed into the final year of the six-year contract that he signed after his entry-level deal. So hopefully the Canadians can continue to build around him because it's been a few disappointing seasons in a row now. Year number nine for Shane Wright, and he has some new line mates with Jake Gens on his left and William Nylander on his right. A little up there in age, but still good players nonetheless. Jordan Cairo on the team now as well. Defensively, the Canadians have Seth Jones. So you know what? The team is actually looking very solid for the first time in a long time, as opposed to some of the holes that have been there in the past. But Shane Wright is in the last year of that six-year extension that he signed after his ELC. So he'll want to get paid, or maybe he'll want to move on after this season. The Canadians better make it a good one if they want him to stay long term he's been a point per game guy ever since he got here 647 games with the franchise he has 618 points so they're definitely going to want to put on a show for him this season the last six years have been four first round exits and two missed playoffs so hopefully year number nine is a good one Year number nine is another rocky one for the Canadians as they miss out on the playoffs, finishing 19th in the NHL with 88 points and a record of 42, 36, and 4. Another down year for Shane Wright as he played in all 82 games but only scored 66 points, his new second lowest since his rookie season. Heading into this offseason, he is a 90 overall free agent, UFA. So at the age of 28, he's definitely be wanting to make a lot of money. The Canadians will want to keep him. Do they have cap issues? It is possible. If this ninth season is the end of Shane Wright's time in Montreal, he would leave as the current leader in goals per season as he had that 34 goal season. Points with his 108 point season and assists in that same season scoring 79 assists. No franchise, game, rookie or any of those other records to his name. With the last six, seven years being missed playoffs, first round exit, missed playoffs, first round exit, missed playoffs, first round exit, first round exit since that Stanley Cup back in 2025. I don't know if the Canadians and Shane Wright will want to part ways mutually perhaps, but we'll see what happens here in the 2032 off season. Headed into his 10th NHL season, Shane Wright decides to stay with the Montreal Canadiens, signing an 8-year extension, paying him $10.835 million per year, just over $86.5 million to stay with Montreal until the age of 36. Uh, to afford him, though, the Canadiens did move on from Nick Suzuki, who was asking for about $11.5 million. So the forward core is looking pretty depleted. The first line looks okay. Tyler Boucher and Dylan Dubé. So he got some uh, uh, some Quebecois blood in there. The defense looking a bit depleted. Goaltending Jake Ottinger out there. But here he is. He's signed on for eight more years. It looks like he'll be a lifer with Montreal Canadiens. Can he continue to break these records? Hopefully give some veteran leadership to this younger core and move on and eventually get a Stanley Cup championship. Marco Casper, a player who was drafted in the same draft as Shane Wright, he'll be a first round pick in 2022. Shane Wright can be the leader for guys like that, as I wouldn't be surprised if he is the captain of this team by now. But 10th season, 2032-33, a lot of heartbreak the last few years. Let's see what the Habs can do. Year number 10 sees the trend continue of the Canadians making the playoffs every second year. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. But they finished 11th in the NHL with 97 points, a record of 47, 32, and 3. Shane Wright continues as the big dog, 81 game season, 35 goals and 76 points from him. And once more the trend continues as the Canadians drop in the first round to the Buffalo Sabres, who would lose to the Panthers, who would lose to the Devils, who would go on to win the Stanley Cup in five games against the San Jose Sharks. In those seven games, Shane Wright did what he could, nine points in seven games. 
Really tough out here. The scoring was there. Maybe it was the goaltending. I don't know what. The Canadians have had some horrible bad luck as they've only made the playoffs five of the last eight seasons. And every single one of those five times has been a first round exit. But headed into year number 11, Shane Wright is now up to a 91 overall. Face-offs at 88, passing up to 97. Small increases there that jump, you know, giving that little bump to 91. Will that mean anything for the team headed into the 2033 offseason? We'll see. Year number 11, and Shane Wright maintained his 91 overall over the offseason, playing first line with Faraby and Zuby. Christian Dvorak has found his way back to Montreal. Very fun to see. Now at the age of 29, just knocking on the door of the 30s. 95 offensive awareness, no category lower than four stars. After a good season, you know, he had 66 points in 2032. He had 76 points in 2033. Let's hope 33-34 is another improvement, as recent history is still really Really getting us down. In year number 11, thanks to a weaker Eastern Conference, the Canadians squeak into the playoffs as the 18th best team in the league. 87 points and a record of 39, 34, and 9. Numbers that we like to see from Shane Wright. 80 games, 80 points, point per game season right there. 30 goals for the 30-year-old. Very, very nice to see him back in the 80s for the first time. Since he scored 80 points in 2027-28, year number 5. But, of course, they lost in round number one in seven games to the Red Wings, who went on to lose to the Devils in the Eastern Conference Finals, who beat, once again, the San Jose Sharks, who lose in seven games. So, New Jersey Devils, the 2034 Stanley Cup champions. Wright had six points in seven games, but it was another first-round exit, the sixth time in nine years. Six consecutive playoff berths that result in a first-round exit. Really shocking stuff. The new Toronto Maple Leafs, pretty much, of this universe. Year number 12 coming up, Shane Wright, 80 points in 80 games. Let's hope that he can maintain this pace and try to finally get this team out of the first round. And my apologies, I caught this a couple years too late, but in 2033-34, Shane Wright did win the Frank J. Selke Trophy, his first piece of hardware since the Hart, uh, Art Ross and Ted Lindsay back in 2025-26. So kudos to him for winning the Selke. Not many players can win the Hart, Art Ross, and Selke in their careers, so hopefully he can carry over some of those good vibes into next season. Year number 12, and Shane Wright is still at a 91 overall at the age of 30. He has Cole Sillinger on his left, this guy Aiden Alberts on his right. Uh, I find it funny that Philip Zadina in the future here has found his way to Montreal. Uh, the defense is really weak on the Canadians, gotta say that. Uh, Brian Komisarek, potentially the son of Mike Komisarek on, uh, on uh, defense there. Lucas Dostal and uh, Jeremy Swayman, the goalies for this season. But just to say that Shane Wright is 30 going on 31, still maintaining his overall. His D-Kings at 96, as is his hand-eye, and his passing and puck control at 99. The first time that we've seen that, I believe. So we're hoping for a potentially explosive offensive season, as please, let's get out of this first round. Year number 12 was another year of just squeaking into the playoffs as the Canadians finished 18th in the NHL and a record of 36, 32, and 14 got them into the postseason. Tampa Bay, four more wins than them, but finishing 19th, very, very tight. A very weird season as Shane Wright scored only 59 points in 82 games. This team made the playoffs, yet it was the lowest offensive output of Shane Wright's career, even at a 91 overall. He dropped to 90, but really sad when I thought this would be an explosive offensive season. Very, very weird. And to no one's surprise, the Canadians lost in round number one again to the Panthers, who got swept by the Sabres, who lost to the Islanders, who lost to the Stars. So once again, the Canadians were the ultimate losers of the 2035 playoffs. And for the third year in a row and seventh time in the last 10 years, the Montreal Canadiens lose in the first round. Somehow Wright did fantastic in the playoffs as he scored 11 points in 7 games, but regardless it was not enough, and headed into year number 13 he will carry his 90 overall. Attributes drop back down a little bit to what they've been in the last few years, and really I have nothing left to say when it comes to hope for this team, they really seem to be cursed. Year number 13 and Shane Wright is still a 90 overall. Cole Sillinger on his left, a 78 overall, 38 year old Brock Besser on his right. We'll see how that pans out. Wright is coming off the worst offensive season of his career and another first round exit. So let's see what happens in this 13th season. 
Year number 13 sees the Canadians have by far their worst season in Shane Wright's career. 29th place in the NHL, 4th from the bottom. 75 points and a record of 32, 39, and 11. Shane Wright once again carrying 20 goals and 49 assists for 69 points in 82 games. The problem is there's no one to shoot. Even with 49 assists and 20 goals, who is he really passing to? If I was Shane Wright, I would be pretty fed up at this point. Heading into his 14th season next year, he's still a 90 overall. 32 years of age, elite potential, not going to start dropping yet, but the time will be coming soon where he cannot continue to maintain those first line attributes. Year number 14 now for Shane Wright and the Montreal Canadiens and the reinforcements are here. Shane Wright, 90 overall. On his left is Clint Horkoff, a player who was drafted first overall in 2027. A centerman with 92 faceoffs, but they have him on the wing. Doesn't matter. He's an 88 overall. Brady Kachuk on his right, 37 years of age, 85 overall. So let's really hope not only for a really good season for Shane Wright, but for the Canadians as a whole. Defense is still extremely suspect as it looks like an AHL caliber team. And goalies are both AHL caliber again. So we'll see if the offense can carry them through. Shane Wright, 32, going on 33, 90 overall. Uh, passing has regressed. As we've been seeing, things like deking, passing offensive awareness are at 93. 96 93 respectively as opposed to 94 99 95 that we've seen before but with better line mates with a better core hopefully Shane Wright can have a better season than he has had the last couple of years and there will finally be some postseason success even when the bar is as low as it's been the Canadians just keep on finding a way to get lower in year number 14 the Habs finish 30th in the NHL, third last, 75 points, a record of 32, 39, and 11. And for the first time in Shane Wright's career, it's back-to-back -back seasons of no playoffs. Shane Wright, once again leading the team in points, 67 this year in 80 games, a very playmaking type season, 15 goals and 52 assists. Horkoff, Kachuk were out there, but they didn't really do what you would have hoped that they would. And heading into year number 15, I hope that the Canadians have had some good draft picks. I hope that this year will be another good draft pick because Shane Wright is now 33 years of age. I don't know how long he can keep this up. He has not tasted the second round of the playoffs ever since the Stanley Cup championship back in 2025. This man needs support. Year number 15, let's hit it. Shane Wright, 33 years of age, 88 overall, first line center. On his left is 38-year-old, 80 overall, Brady Kachuk. And on his right is 18-year-old, 80 overall, Zachary Panayi. He ended up being the fifth overall pick in this last draft. The Canadians dropped from three to five. He has five-star shooting. Give him the playmaking ability of the veteran Shane Wright. This could be a good match and potentially in the, of the future as well. Korkoff now down to second line center. Decent winger depth. Uh, defensively, slight improvements and goaltending Yuka Alto, who was a second round pick and was signed for a pretty good contract. Okay, so could the Canadians return to the playoffs? We'll see what happens this year. Shane Wright is down to an 88 overall. His potential has dropped from elite to top six. It's pretty much in the defensive category where it's dropped a little bit. Shot blocking 83. He's too old for that. He doesn't do that anymore. Offensive awareness down to 92. I think shooting accuracy may have dropped a little bit. But aside from that, the puck skills, the senses, it's all still there. The physical down a little bit. He's still elite. He's still a leader. He is likely the captain of this franchise. He is well over 1,000 games played. He'd like to maybe even go for some franchise records. And in year number 15, he is still very capable of being the top player on this team. Year number 15 was another season of just squeaking into the playoffs, but postseason is postseason. The Montreal Canadiens finished 16th in the NHL with 89 points and a record of 41, 34, and 7. Their best spot in the NHL standings since 2032-33. And as it usually goes, when the Canadians do well, Shane Wright is probably behind the scenes. He played in all 82 games, scoring 29 goals and 55 assists, scoring 84 points. Actually, his second best season of his career statistically. It's that 84-point season now in 2037-38. No season better than the season when he won the Hart, Art, Ross, and the Lindsay back in 2025-26. So it's very fitting that in a season like this, the Canadians finally made it out of the first round for the first time since they won the Stanley Cup back in 2025. They beat the Hurricanes in a seven-game thriller, but were then subsequently swept 
by the eventual Stanley Cup winning Pittsburgh Penguins. So at least it was against the eventual Cup champions, but that hurts when Shane Wright was doing so well. He's getting older. He's 34 years old right now. He went point per game in the playoffs, 11 points in 11 games. He has been the catalyst through and through. But now as he's getting up there in age, he's down to an 87 overall. Can he continue to maintain what he's been doing? His passing still up at 97 and all that stuff, but other attributes are slowly going to begin to drop physical down to three stars. We'll see what kind of offseason Shane Wright has and if he can maintain the overall and the abilities headed into year number 16. And a huge boost in the 2038 offseason as the Canadians had acquired the Islanders' first round pick in a previous trade. That was the third overall pick. That pick wins the draft lottery and at the 2038 draft, Montreal will be selecting number one. And with the first overall pick in the draft, the Montreal Canadiens go ahead and select an 82 overall medium elite sniper. This guy, Dale Bannister, 18 years of age, five-star shooting. So add in that sniper that they took at fifth overall in last year's draft. And hopefully as Shane Wright is continuing to age, the youth will be able to complement his playmaking ability. And 2038-39 should be another good stepping stone. Headed into Shane Wright's 16th NHL season, for the first time in his career, he is being moved to the wing. Now, likely change as the year goes on, but to start the year, they have him on the wing as an 87 overall, despite him still being at 88 uh, face-offs. All the other attributes that you care about, the passing, offensive awareness, the shooting, all still up there, even though as we are seeing the skating, the physical continues to drop a little bit. 87 overall at 34 years of age with top six potential means it will likely go down a bit more over the course of this season. But the youth seems to be growing pretty well. There are two top prospects growing from 80 to 82 over this offseason, hoping for big things. And as I said, a stepping stone kind of year for this new look Montreal Canadian team that is being led by Shane Wright. A veteran who has been Mr. Consistently through and through and is very close to setting a new franchise record for games played in the Montreal Canadiens organization. A huge disappointment for the Montreal Canadiens in year number 16 as they finish 27th in the NHL, back to their old ways. A 76-point season with a record of 31, 37, and 14. Age got to Shane Wright a little bit this season as once again a full 82 game season which I believe put him as the all-time leader in games played in Montreal Canadiens history. A 63 point season which is quite respectable but not quite what he's used to doing. Kind of on pace of what he's been doing the last few years minus last season's 84 point season. At the end of 2039, he is 35 years of age and has unfortunately dropped to an 82 overall with a third line scoring role. Now, this is not a huge deal as the Canadians have some of the youth to continue to build around Shane right now being more of a complimentary piece and then their young guys can take the spotlight. But I really hope that he can maintain this overall headed into next season. He's still an elite passer. He's still a good scorer. He's still a solid centerman. He can do a lot of things for Montreal Canadiens. So hopefully 2039-40, Year number 17 will be one that allows the youth to thrive. Headed into year number 17, the final year of Shane Wright's eight-year extension that he signed way back when. He is a second-line center down at 82 overall now. He is 35 years of age. He's semi-retired pretty much now. He is just a legend in the organization as he holds the franchise record in games played. We'll get those records later on. But the first line are the two young snipers on the wings with Horkoff down the middle. Right now the second-line center with Suter and McKay, 270-some overall guys on that second line. Wright still maintains a lot of the great attributes, but he is down to medium top nine potential, which means he will likely continue to drop in overall. His physical is at two and a half stars. His skating is down to three stars, but his passing, his offensive awareness, his shooting, all those skills are still there. So in what could honestly possibly be his final season with Montreal Canadiens, or even the final season of his NHL career here in the 17th NHL season, Shane Wright is really going to be hoping to put up some numbers and turn back the clock. Hopefully the Canadiens can move around some of the players in their lineup and give him the best opportunity to succeed. Year number 17 was a great surprise as the Montreal Canadiens finished 8th in the NHL. Their best results since 2025-26 when they finished 3rd in the league. Since then they had no better than 11th. So 8th in the league, 99 points, a record of 47, 30, and 5. A bit odd as they allowed more goals than they scored, but still good enough to be 8th best in the league. 
As I was hoping, Shane Wright turned back the clock. Now 36 years of age, he played in 78 games and scored 67 points. Another strong playmaking season as some guys were getting into the 20s and even 30s of goal scoring. Shane Wright improved to an 84 overall, so his performance allowed him to even go back to some of the attributes uh, that he had previously, especially in the defensive category. And as always, the passing offensive awareness, shooting all that untouched. Really, really strong season from Shane Wright. But, of course, guess what happened in the playoffs? The Canadians dropped in five games in round number one to the Washington Capitals, who lost to the Hurricanes, who would go on to lose in the Stanley Cup Final to the Anaheim Ducks. Another year of not getting much playoff time, only five games of postseason action for Shane Wright, scored three assists in those five games. But now with his contract being up, it is expired, he is a UFA. Will the Canadians want to re-sign Shane Wright for another couple of years or so as he continues to be second, third line center? Do they move on from him after all the years that he has spent in this organization? 17 years, franchise records, a Stanley Cup, some hardware, we'll see in the 2040 offseason. In his 18th season, Shane Wright moved on from the Montreal Canadiens. He was not re-signed, went to free agency, and in 2040-41, at the age of 36, will be going to the New York Islanders. He signed a two-year deal, paying him 8.86 per season, just over $17.5 million for those two seasons. He comes in as an 83 overall, yes, with bottom six potential, listed as a second-line forward, but he is going to be playing first-line minutes, which was definitely very appealing. The wings are okay. The Center depth is pretty rough, the defense is pretty solid, and the goaltending is at least there, because uh, later in the franchise mode, many teams have 70 overalls in net. So Shane Wright, year number one beyond the Montreal Canadiens, 17 seasons with the Habs, signs a two-year deal now in his 18th year. Let's see how the Islanders do with Shane Wright leading the way. In year number 18, the New York Islanders were the second worst team in the NHL. The Blues were historically bad, but the Islanders, 73-point season to finish 31st, a record of 31, 40, and 11. You'll see that up in 26, the Canadians did not do much better. However, Shane Wright put up some incredible numbers as he now has a new second-best season of his career as he scored 87 points, now 37 years of age, in 77 games, or even play a full 82, and he scored 87, which is the second most that he's ever scored in a season 64 assists a couple of snipers out there lundin and shields and you know who cares that he has the bottom six potential he still maintained that 84 overall 99 puck control 98 passing the man is just aging like a fine wine and he is a playmaker through and through one more year like contract next season will he stick around to play it does he consider retirement after such a strong individual season but more team letdowns does he do one more we'll find out here in the 2041 offseason Season. But after 18 seasons in the NHL and just one last dagger of not making the playoffs, Shane Wright says, I've had enough and I'm calling it a career. 37 years of age, he comes off of an 87-point season. He was still going to be at an 83 overall headed into next season, perhaps, and he retires with 1,000. 336 points in 1,453 games played. He was very consistent in games played. Never played less than 77 in a season, I believe. Always very consistently, usually played 82 games a season. Looking at his games played here, that 77 game season with the Islanders was the lowest of his career, I believe. Yes, tied with uh, his lowest. Always 77 at least games played. Points, he was always, the lowest season of his career was 59 points, but could usually be counted on for that 60 to 70 range. He had, it goes out with a plus 60, so on some tough teams for sure. Was never a big, big plus minus guy aside from his big 108 point season. 655 penalty minutes, never more than 63. Pretty consistent in that regard as well. Very disciplined. Shots didn't shoot that that much. He had a few seasons, minus the years in the OHL. He had a few seasons of being in the you know, 220s, but was usually more of a 200 to 190 shot guy. Shooting percentage, 12.5% in his career. Goes out with 253 power play points, minus the OHL seasons there, just looking at the NHL. Was never a huge power play guy. Never more than 20 points there. Shorthanded, 37 points. Time on ice in his career ends up being 21-37 a night. His most was 23 and a half, and he never had less than 16-14 in his rookie season. In an NHL season, it was usually at least in the 20s. So uh, usually he was supplemented. You know, yes, he was first line center, but he was oftentimes there was you know Horkoff and the Canadians as the backup at second line, stuff like that. 
Uh, goes out with over 31,000 minutes played in the NHL. His faceoff percentage goes out at 52.93%. Had some very strong seasons in the 55s, 56s. He was consistent in that regard as well. Over 2,000 hits, 380 block shots, 878 giveaways, but 1,666 takeaways. Very, very good stick uh, defensively. 128 takeaway season there in 2028-29. That was nice to see. And, uh, man, yeah, he could have done one more, I think. But after such pain in the playoffs, and speaking of the playoffs, let's look at he, look at the, the numbers here, sorting by the years. He was often in the playoffs, but many, you know, never passed the first round. And yeah, he was in the playoffs more than he wasn't in his career, but very short stints. Yes, 24 games to Stanley Cup. Had an Eastern Conference final or two. I think just one, actually. Uh, yeah, just one Eastern Conference final. One second round, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, first round exits. Playoffs, 83 points in 97 games. Still very, very solid. Negative eight, 34 penalty minutes, 11.2 uh, shooting percentage in the playoffs, 22 power play points. Average 20 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, played over 2,000 minutes. Uh, on the faceoff dot, it was 53.19%. 156 hits, 26 blocks. 53 giveaways, 90 takeaways, the ratio a bit smaller there, but still solid enough. If I just start at 2023-24, his first season, Eastern Conference Final in year one, Stanley Cup Championship in year two, and then year three and four, first round exit, year five, missed the playoffs, six, first round, seven, missed, eight, first round, nine, missed, 10, 11, 12, first round exit, 13, 14, missed. Year 15, second round exit. Year 16, missed. Year 17, first round exit. Year 18, missed. So a lot of heartache, bad luck. I, you know, I can't say that it was his fault. He was always close to point a game. He was doing what he had to do, but oftentimes it goes in the EA world, not supported by the team that the AIGM builds around him. He made a lot of money, could have probably made a little bit more, but took a little bit of a discount to stay in Montreal, I think. He did a lot for the Canadians organization. And speaking of them, Shane Wright retires as the all-time leader in points with 1,249, most assists with 829, most games played at 1,376. What a career. 17 years with the Canadians. One Stanley Cup, a Hart, an Art Ross, a Lindsay, a Selkie. Franchise records on a team that's been around for what now in 2040? Like 120 some years, 130 some years. Such impressive numbers. It's too bad that it was only one Stanley Cup and so early in his career. Moving Suzuki, moving Caulfield. Uh, having just tough defense, it was the AIGM, of course, that did it, but Shane Wright was always showing up. No season, no rookie, and no single game records for Shane Wright, just some franchise records. Points, assists, and games played, those are some big ones. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the NHL 22 simulation of Shane Wright's career, having been drafted by the Montreal Canadiens, if it does indeed happen in July of 2022. I'm looking forward to coming back to this video in the future, if uh, Wright does indeed go to the Canadiens and have some success or not in his career with the Habs. I hope you enjoyed this style of video, which is a bit shorter than the last ones, like Trevor Zegers was close to an hour and a half, Lafreniere was over an hour, so I hope that this kind of shorter style was nice for all of you didn't quite follow the team as much as just the player let me know are there any players that you would like to see a career simulated for next i'd love to do some more of these especially with the draft coming up if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like it does take a ton of work multiple late nights of recording editing and all of these images in between with all the stats so i would appreciate that so much leave a comment with your thoughts on it what were the craziest things about shane wright's career what could come true out of everything that happened what do you think does he bring the Canadians to a Stanley Cup and win some of these awards along the way? And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you become a part of the team. NHL 22, NHL 07, FIFA 22, and much, much more hockey breakdown videos, these career simulations. We'd love to have you join up being a part of the team. It would be that much sweeter with you on it. And hey, you'll be made aware of all the uploads when they go live. So be sure to subscribe. Check out the Discord server in the link in the description down below. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again in the next one.